Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Judge Lee, I'd like to start with you, if that's okay. Um, a few years ago, you published an article in the Hastings uh, Race and Poverty Law Journal. Uh, in that publication, um, you, you criticized the prison system based on the fact that the prison system, quote, relies heavily on a dichotomous sex-based means of classification, meaning, quote, prisoners are classified by their biological attributes, attributes rather than their gender identification. I, do I take this to mean that uh, you think that in some circumstances, biologically male prisoners should be placed in, in prison facilities set aside uh, to incarcerate women uh, based on their identification? Senator, that article or that piece was a summary of a panel which I moderated sure. over maybe it was 13, 14 uh -huh. years ago. Uh, we had three panelists which focused on three different populations or segments of the prison population. The piece's purpose was to summarize the arguments and discussions that were raised by each of those panelists. Right. And so and that's why that's I'm asking the question is. about what you think. Do uh, you think biological male prisoners should be placed in female women's, in, in prisons set aside for women? Senator, that issue in terms of designations or, and so forth are live issues which are happening across the country in our courts. Well, important conversations with policymakers are having and which we are deciding and reviewing as courts. And so uh, I, don't want to be, I don't want to make it appear as though I'm prejudging the case. Okay. But you did comment on that, and that's what raised the question. And the reason I'm concerned with it is there are a number of women uh, who have been concerned about this, including yes. an, a number who are uh, the survivors of domestic violence, uh, who are currently suing Governor Gavin Newsom in the state of California to stop a California law that would do this, that would house prisoners based on their declared gender identity uh, thus allowing in, in many circumstances for a biologically male prisoner to identify as female and on that basis be placed inside a prison facility set aside for women. Um, they've raised concerns there. So what, what would you say to those women? And uh, what would you say to those who, uh, as allegations are, are now being made, let's say that they've been assaulted while in prison by a fellow inmate, raped by uh, biologically male prisoners who were placed in a female prison? Senator, I would say to them that every woman has a right to feel safe and be free of sexual violence. I would also say- Including in that, prison? Yes. Okay. And I would say, sorry, Senator, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, no, that, no, that's okay. I, I, I just, it appeared to be a critique. If you're telling me it was not a critique, when on pages 227 and 228 of the aforementioned uh, Hastings Race and Poverty Law Journal article, when you appear to be criticizing the prison system for the fact that it, quote, relies heavily on a dichotomous sex-based means of classification. Was that not a criticism by you? As I said, it was a panel which I moderated, and with that, that piece was a summary of each of the panelists, their views, the issues that they were raising across the board with those three populations. Okay. Uh, in a speech you gave in 2016, you uh, stated that, quote, Korean American lawyers continue to fight against a bamboo ceiling. It, you're not alone in this, and I, I, I took it from that uh, bamboo ceiling referring to uh, limitations in, imposed on the basis of, uh, of race. Uh, you're not alone in that, and what you described seems similar to some of the discrimination that was experienced by the Asian American plaintiffs in the Students for Fair Admissions case, um, in which the Supreme Court uh, found that the law had been violated, the law and the Constitution had been offended by some of these programs. And yet the Asian Law Caucus, of which you're a board member, fought to maintain Michigan's affirmative action policies, uh, policies that were found unlawful in that case. Uh, do you want to explain these two positions that seem to be different? On the one hand, you're, you're describing the, uh, the bamboo ceiling effect. On the other hand, you're on the board of an organization that sought to perpetuate the very um, uh, policies 
that were found to be discriminatory against Asians? Thank you for that question, Senator. Um, I was on the board of the Asian Law Caucus, I believe, over, over a decade ago or so. Mm -hmm. um, so but, you're not on the I board mean, at the sorry. time, at the time that case was decided, in other words. Okay. And so, and in terms of the case, the Students for Fair Admissions, that is the law of the land. What that says is what I will be applying fully, faithfully, and without reservation. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I ask one quick follow-up on this, and I'll be brief, uh, relevant to that. In, in the Students for Fair Admissions case, the, the court concluded with the statement, um, eliminating racial discrimination means eliminating all of it for the guarantee of equal protection cannot mean one thing when applied to a person of another color. If both are not accorded the same protection, then it is not equal, close quote. Do you agree with that statement? I agree as what is emblazoned on the wall of the Supreme Court that there should be equal justice for all. Thank you. Senator Klobuchar. Thank you very much. I'm going to focus